Now, are Acts and Luke related? And I want to basically work with this Acts and Luke connection. And these, these are some really, really important verses. We're going to come back to them, but let me just read Luke 1, 1 to 4. Who is the audience? Okay, Luke is a Gentile doctor, apparently very well educated. The syntax and grammar of Luke is very sophisticated. The vocabulary, like I said, 800 hapax logomena, words that are used only one time in the New Testament, very rare words, are used in the book of Luke and the Acts kind of thing. So, okay, so Luke is a very sophisticated person in terms of his writing and stuff. And it says, in, and then Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 8, he says this, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who were from the first who were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things that you've been taught. So what you've got is Luke, yes, a doctor, Gentile, northern Turkey possibly. One of the church fathers said he was from Antioch in Syria, whatever. Okay, but he's Gentile from those territories. So that's our, that's our author. And now who is he writing to? He actually lists who he is writing to, and he calls this guy most excellent Theophilus. Now what's interesting is that if you go over to Acts chapter, um, this is how you spell the guy's name, most excellent Theophilus. Now, um, let me just do something while I'm here. When he says most excellent Theophilus, do you see that that's giving the guy some sort of status? So a lot of people will believe that this Theophilus guy was a guy, a person of status, okay? And um, let me just put the cards out on the table now. A lot of people think, I think at least, and, and many others I believe, that Luke is writing to most excellent Theophilus because where is Paul at this time? Paul is in prison. Where is Paul? He's in prison. He's in prison in Rome. He made an appeal to go to Rome to be tried Caesar's court. And basically what happens is then Luke is writing to Most Excellent Theophilus to tell Most Excellent Theophilus, first of all, about Jesus and all the stuff that took place there. And also, why is the book of Acts, after about chapter 12 or 13, so much? The whole rest of the book of Acts is about Paul. And so basically what you have is Luke writing these two books, telling about Jesus and telling about Paul, in order that most excellent Theophilus may be able to throw some weight and get Paul off out of jail. And so it's possible that these two uh, books were written to help get Paul out of jail so that he wouldn't get killed and, and, and be executed in, uh, in, the, in the Caesar's court uh, coming out of that. So I think that's, that plays some of the things behind this. So he's writing to most excellent Theophilus somebody that can throw some weight around in terms of Caesar's court. Now, the other way that Theophilus can be taken, if you break this word apart, you see the word has theo, theo, theology. Theo means God. Theos. Theos means God. Philos means like Philadelphia, love. Philos means love, like brotherly love. Philadelphia. Phil means love. Adelphos means brother. Philadelphia is a city of brotherly love. At least it used to be. Okay? Theo, Phyllis, lover of God. So some people think that this is a kind of a moniker, lover of God, most excellent lover of God, that he's describing the character of the people to whom he's writing, that the person is a lover of God. Now, I don't think that's true. I think most excellent Theophilus is a title. I think he's writing to somebody of status. He's trying to get, basically present who Christ was, who Paul was, to say, now you've got the facts, you can go in into Caesar's court and help Paul out, get him out of jail, that kind of thing. 28% of the New Testament. Whoa, here we go. This is the verse that I just read to you in uh, Luke chapter 1. Many have undertaken to drop an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us. So you can see he's not a first-hand witness here. Most excellent Theophilus. Now, the point in bringing this up so that you may know the certainty of the things you've been taught. Now, the point is to compare this with Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, verse 1, and where he says, in my former book, and he lists that he's got a former book out, in my former book, Theophilus, and identifies the same Theophilus person here that's mentioned in the book of Luke. So Theophilus is mentioned in the beginning of Luke, 
and Theophilus is mentioned in the beginning of Acts. And in the book of Acts, it says, in my former book. So it's, you know, this is referring back to the book of Luke. And so you get this connection between Luke and Acts, both written to Theophilus, this most excellent Theophilus, by Luke, Acts chapter 1 and Luke chapter 1. Okay? So the two books are connected. Um, kind of like a very helpful thing there. Now, the former book, um, they're related, and we talked about going back and forth. It's not, they're not anonymous, okay? The person who wrote the book of Luke, uh, the people know he's writing to most excellent Theophilus, and basically they know who he is, okay? It's not anonymous. It seems to me also the recipient knew who the me was, okay? The recipient, Theophilus, knew who, who the me was. We said the vocabulary and style, very, very developed vocabulary. Style, syntactically uh, very sophisticated, uh, sophisticated writer. 